I'm going to talk to you today about two things that I actually like about hell. The first thing that I like about hell is Satan is going there. The second thing I like about hell is you don't have to go. Now, I can stand here and I can tell you my opinions and I can tell you what I think and what I feel and whatever else, but uh, I'm a Bible-believing preacher, so I'm going to show you what the Scriptures say about this subject. If you don't have a King James Bible, you need to get one. It's the greatest book that's ever been written. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. You can't expect to make it through life without this book. Unless you're a complete fool and reject what God wrote. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire. They say, no, it's just you just burn up. Everlasting fire. Oh, it's the grave. You don't have fire in a grave. All right? It's everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, how could you do it? You know what I've seen over the years? I have seen that the vast majority of people will insulate themselves in a safe little bubble where they don't want to really, they'll hear about the world's problems, but they'll say, well, it's always been kind of bad and, and it's, it's not really getting worse. And they just live in this safe little vacuum. They create the theory of evolution, which says things are getting better. Everything's getting better. But yet they refuse to, re to accept the fact, how do things get better? Through death, through war, through suffering. Only the strongest survive. I mean, think about the philosophy of evolution, how stupid it is, you know? We're getting better through lots and lots and lots of death. And those people who espouse the theory of evolution very rarely ever want to carry it out to its logical conclusion. Hey, if there's disabled people out there or, or people that are retarded, you know, or whatever else, or some race that we don't like, well, then just go eliminate them. Is that not the theory of evolution? You see, it truly is, but people don't want to really follow that. But people insulate themselves in this special little safe haven, this safe, safe little bubble, and they don't want to think about the children that are being molested out there by people from the Vatican, the priests and things like this, and then they claim that they're Christians. <laughs> they're not Christians. Catholicism has never been Christian. All right? Read the King James Bible. There's nothing in there about the Catholic Church at all. There's no popes. There's no sacraments. There's no Eucharist. There's no nuns. There's no monks. No cathedrals to be built. None of that stuff. Hmm. But you're too close-minded to read it, aren't you? It's a scary book. And oh, you can find all kinds of contradictions in it. Sure you can. Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about that as we continue. But my point is, people don't want to think about how bad this world really is. How bad reality really is. They don't want to think about that. So when you say, hey, God, the Father, created a place for Satan and his angels. Satan is the one who causes all this evil. God's created a place for him to burn forever. Most people say, oh, well, I just don't think that he would deserve it because they're in their safe little bubble, you see. I just don't think that people, you know, I don't think anybody would deserve to go to hell and burn forever. Just stay in your safe little bubble there. You're such a good person. You know, you wouldn't burn if there's a real, if there's a God and, and everything, if the Bible really is true, well, you wouldn't burn because you're such a fine individual. I don't think so. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan has blinded your eyes. Satan blinded my eyes for many, many years until I was 26 years old. I was a false convert. I was raised in church. I was on my way to hell. A hell-bound, professing Christian. Yeah. Satan had my eyes blinded very well. But I woke up. Matthew chapter 23. Why is there so much evil in the world? Why, you know, wouldn't God stop it? Well, let's look about when God manifest in the flesh was walking around on the earth and let's see what he had to say. Matthew chapter 23 beginning in verse 29. This is Jesus speaking in this portion of Scripture I'm reading to you. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, 
because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Stop there for a minute. These are religious leaders that Jesus is rebuking. Keep that in mind. Verse 31, Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? That is one of the most significant statements in the entire Bible. God manifest in the flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ, He is God. And He is there and He is saying, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The Bible elsewhere says, by Him all things consist. By the Lord Jesus Christ, all things consist consist by him. He's the source of life. You realize he could have said to these religious people, he could have said, believe in me. And overthrew their will. And all of a sudden they, you're God in the flesh. Oh, and, and they would have changed. But God, when he was here on this earth, walking around, he refused to overthrow man's free will. You see, God the Father, the reason there's so much evil and everything else out there is because Satan is the one who's behind it all. But God is not going to overthrow people's free will. You have an opportunity to accept or reject Him. You can do whatever you want in this life. Whatever you want. The Lord's not going to come in and say, no, don't do, I'm going to force you to come to heaven. Not going to happen. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 43 through 47. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You're into lies, aren't you? You make fun of the book. You know why? Because your father, the devil, has you deceived. And if you don't repent, if you don't turn from your wicked ways and come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a broken sinner and fall down and say, God, please save me, you don't do that, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn for all of eternity with your father, Satan. You say you like that? Yes, actually, I do. I do like that. I'm going to tell you the reason why here in a few minutes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. So I, I just, I, I can't believe it. You know, somebody would preach this kind of a thing in, in, in our modern enlightened age. Keep watching. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. And with all deceivable, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God, I, God wouldn't send anybody to hell. He will send you, if you want to be deceived, if you hate the truth of God's word, if you hate it, God will send you strong delusion so that you will believe the lies that you currently, your life philosophies and things. God will allow you to be in that thing. Why? You reject him. You know, I heard a statement an old preacher made the one time. He said, the worst thing God can do to you is to let you have your way. Amen to that. Absolutely. I don't want to hear about the truth. I don't want to hear about the Bible. I want to shut this thing off and whatever else. Okay, God will send you strong delusion so that you'll believe a lie that you all might be damned. Psalm 9, verse 17. Psalm 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. There was a nation one time that used to put on their currency one nation under God. 
And now you got a bunch of wicked devils out there saying, we need to remove that under God thing. The, the, the name God offends me. Well, if this book is correct, and it is, then the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Guess what? This nation is going to seem more and more like hell. You say, what's hell? Burning, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, outer darkness. Some real rough stuff happened to America in 2017 and other countries too. I'm not excluding the other countries. They're wicked too. But some real wicked, real, real bad stuff happened to America in 2017 and there was no repentance. There was no national repentance. People calling out to God and saying, oh, we're sorry for how wicked this nation is. We're going to start cleaning things up. You know what that means? No repentance. The judgment's going to get even worse this year. All the burning out in the West Coast and everything else, it's going to be 10 times as worse. Second Timothy chapter 4. You see, a lot of people don't realize the fact that, you know, they can just look at me and you make fun of me and say, oh, he, he tripped up on one of his words. <laughs> and, and he's stupid old hillbilly preacher. <laughs> yeah, but you see, uh, I'm bringing judgment on this nation. I'm a preacher. And uh, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you people make fun of it, whatever you do with me, you can make fun of my looks or whatever. I don't care. But when you make fun of the book, and you make fun of God's truth, more judgment is brought upon this nation. And the fact is, I am glad that I serve a God that can judge people, that He's so holy that He knows who's worthy of hell. I'm glad He's sending Satan to hell. He knows who's going to be judged. Romans chapter 2, verse 16 says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel... Your secrets are going to be judged someday. So uh, I, I don't know about this. This is all just ridiculous. Okay. Gamble. See where it gets you. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 through 37 says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Make fun of this. Make fun of this video. Make fun of this ministry. Make fun of this blessed book, this King James Bible. Make fun of it. And you know what? Someday you will stand before a holy, righteous, all-powerful God. And the Bible says every mouth is going to be stopped. You're going to be scared to death. Because you realize that He's going to be condemning you to hell. And you're going to be there burning for all of eternity. And the words that you speak right now about this blessed book, those words, and about God and using His name as a filthy cuss word and whatever else, those words are going to be brought back. And you're going to realize for the first time ever, if you reject Jesus Christ, you, you go on, you live your life, and you die, you're going to realize when you stand before God, I deserve to burn in hell forever. I deserve eternal torment. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. You're going to be judged by Jesus Christ. You say, well, not me. Turn to Romans chapter 14. Not me. I'm not going to be judged. I don't care. I'm just going to, I'm going to mouth off God and, and whatever else. Mm-hmm. Romans chapter 14, verse 11. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Every one of us is going to give account of himself to God. You're going to bow before him. I find that interesting. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Death is sure. They keep trying to put it off and transhumanism and all this other stuff like this. You're going to die. And if you die, you're going to be judged. But let's, that was the bad news. Now let's get into the good news. All right? What's the good news? 
hell, bad news, I'll say it this way, the hell is real. The bad news is that hell is real and people go there. It's, you know, prepared for the devil and his angels. But if you follow the devil, if he's your father, you're going to go there as well. But the good news is you don't have to go there. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. See, people need to understand some things about God. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are, are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Well, I'm afraid of what my friends are going to say. I'm, I, I don't know if it's Christian stuff. I don't know. What would my wife think? Or what would... Uh-huh. You're not being really, truly afraid of God. You say, well, it's more of a reverential respect. No, it's fear. It's fear. You're going to see in the future what God is going to do to this country. And it is going to be cruel. It is going to be vicious. Why? Because people stopped fearing. You know, all the uh, uh, superstitious, you know, people of the past that actually feared God and thought about the Bible and shunned evil things, those people were blessed of the Lord. If you show that you fear God in your life, He isn't going to have to uh, bring some things into your life to make you afraid. But uh, modern man in his sinful pride, oh, I, I laughs at God and everything else. Okay, God's going to bring fear into their lives. Judgment. Job chapter 28, verse 28 says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Are you going to depart from evil? Psalm 19, verse 9, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. If you die in your sins and He condemns you to the lake of fire for all of eternity, because it's hell and then it's lake of fire into eternity, if He condemns you to that, He is true and righteous altogether. Proverbs 1, verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Psalm 14, verse 1, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 24 says, The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Why not be wise in this life? Why not come to the end of yourself? Well, I'm a good person. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm going to show you those verses here as we continue. I'm going to show you what God thinks about you and how you can get out of hell for all of eternity, how he'll save you. Romans chapter 3. This is not a deep, real big study on this issue. I'm just trying to warn people. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Well, I'm a good person. The Bible says you're not. If I'm not so bad, the Bible says you are. Come to the end of yourself. Realize you deserve to go to hell. Wow. Well, I just, that's the problem. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. You say, what about you, Brian? I've sinned. Sure, I've sinned. But I took the cure, you see. What is the cure? Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life." Salvation is Jesus dying on the cross, taking your sins on himself. He dies on the cross. He sheds his blood. His blood washes your sins completely away. The blood that he shed. 
It's not that when you get saved that blood comes out of the heaven and washes you or something. No, it's not that. Physically, I'm talking about. What it's talking about in this passage is you're saved by his blood. You're saved by his death. He died. He shed his blood. Did you ever hear all oh, this was won by blood, sweat, and tears? Where do you think they got that from? When you get saved, your salvation cost Almighty God blood, sweat, and tears. He takes your sinful life and He suffers for it. He takes the punishment for sin and He gives you His righteousness, His imputed righteousness. You can't earn that. Mark chapter 2, verse 17 says, When Jesus heard it, He saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Are you sick of sin? Are you sick of the life that you have? Or you just want a little bit more sin? You just want a little bit more of the filth? Without God being there, the big bully to tell you, hey, stop doing that. That's the reason people don't get saved. Isn't that stupid? Well, I just want a little bit more alcohol. I sure do enjoy going out and getting drunk. I just want a little bit more sex perversion. I sure do enjoy all the manipulation and all the broken relationships and the sexually transmitted diseases and all the other wonderful things which, which come with sexual promiscuity. Boy, it sure is fun. <laughs> I just want the drugs. I just want the wickedness on television. I just want to watch and, and hear profanity and all the other sins and things that are out there. I'm not quite ready yet to get cleaned up. I'm not quite ready yet to have God come into my life and tell me what to do. If you die in that state, you deserve to go to hell. Romans chapter 3 verse 8 says, And not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come. And what is Paul's reaction to the people lying about him? So what he says, whose damnation is just. If you reject Jesus Christ and His righteousness, if you reject the life that God gives you after salvation and God coming in and telling you what to do, your damnation is just. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, well, I believe in predestination. I believe that the doctrines of Calvin, the satanic philosopher that he was. Um, no, Calvin was a liar. You see? Oh, what, what? maybe you don't know about it. Calvinism is that you're pre-chosen. God basically makes you into a robot and he says you have you know unconditional election and things. And so I'm going to save you against your free will. And everything that you do, the divine providence of God just guides your whole life and you just don't have any say in anything. Calvin, John Calvin denied free will. Well, if there's no free will, then how can you earn wages? God forced you into your life of sin, according to John Calvin, because you're non-elect. And so you stand up there before God and he says, depart from me, you curse it. You say, well, yeah, you know, you created me this way. All the sin and wickedness and everything else out there, according to John Calvin, God caused it. That's why it's satanic wickedness. The fact of the matter is, you have a free will. I have a free will. Hitler had a free will. Mao Zedong had a free will. Every pope that's ever lived had a free will. How did they use that free will? By earning lots of wages. Sinning. That leads to death. I was earning some real good wages for a while with all my sin. And uh, I finally got to the point where I said, you know what? I don't want to work this job anymore. I don't want this life anymore of this sin and everything else. I don't want this. I want something holy. I want something righteous. And I came to the Lord in a broken, contrite spirit. God, please have mercy on me, a sinner. I can't stop this life. I don't want I just I, I just I don't want to continue with this. Change my life. Please, God, save me. And he did. See, how do you do that? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13. 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him should, shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, well, I can't get saved. You don't understand, Brian. I'm a, I'm a homosexual. I'm a transvestite. I'm a, I'm a Satanist. I'm a, I'm a member of MK Ultra. I'm a black ops or whatever else. Or I'm a Jesuit or whatever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you a sinner? You say, well, yeah, I've done some really bad. Okay, then you qualify. Well, I just don't. Do you want to go to hell and burn forever? You're going to go there if you die without the righteousness of Jesus Christ in your life. You don't have to go to hell. I'm a desperate man here, okay? I see so many people, and they just, they live in this fascinating little bubble. Everything's okay. Things are going to get better. Everything, it's not so bad. It's everything's, you know, I'm a good person. You're a good person. We're all good people. If there is a hell, I, well, then I wouldn't go there because I'm a good person. That goes contrary to the teachings of Scripture. You have to come to a point where you're broken and you say, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. If I had to stand before a holy, righteous God that's going to judge my secrets, my thoughts, all the words that I've ever spoken, that scares me. I need to come to Him. And, and get saved and plead with him. Please, God, save me. Finally, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, verse 10 through 13. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you have the Son of God? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? See, what's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Um, you don't need to come through me to get to the Lord. I'm not going to have the comment section. It's disabled down there. Why? Because you don't need to have other people and things and whatever. You need to deal with God one-on-one. -on -one. You say, well, I'm going to have to go to the Vatican and go to St. Peter's Basilica and crawl on my knees and go kiss a statue's foot or something like this. That's going to land you in hell. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. One-on-one. -on -one. You come to God and you say, God, I don't know if you're real or not. I, I have no idea. Please show me the truth. I want to know the truth. Wouldn't it be nice to have an assurance of salvation? Do you believe the record? Say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find Jesus apart from the Bible. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Why? Because he gave you a written record telling you about Jesus Christ. You can look in this book here and you can check the words that I've said to you. If I just give you my opinions and things in my denominational slant and the, what my church council said and whatever else, um, that doesn't mean anything. That's just my opinions. I haven't given you my opinions today. I've given you what the scriptures say. So many false religious people out there and they're going to tell you there is no hell uh, there's there's you know God wouldn't do anything like that God wouldn't burn somebody forever and ever I'm here to tell you that I like the fact that God is going to burn people that reject his son forever and ever I like that fact why because I know that God is so just and so holy he can determine that if you come to me, I've had so many people deceive me in my life. People that I thought were good people. They were liars and con artists and cheats and all kinds of things. I can't judge perfect judgment. 
all right? I can judge if somebody, you know, lines up with the Bible and whatever else, but there's people that can come and pretend that they line up with the Bible and they're lying to me the whole time. But they can't lie to God. And they're going to stand before God someday, before the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're going to be judged. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every single one of us. I chose to get saved. I pray that you do the same.